Hello, everyone. Hi. So we're here with Nico from Japan Studio. Hello. Father of the bots. Yeah. <laughs> Father of the bots. And Maya, once again, for some sculpting action and character creation. So, like, the thing we have in Dreams is we have this character maker tool. It lets you do proportions, and then you can sculpt on it. So we're going to try to sculpt one of the bots. Great. No, that Nico sounds, that sounds brilliant, you know. <laughs> AR bots. So they were called AR bots, but these days um, we have a bit Scope of... bots. <laughs> well, we were doing VR, so you know we have to. <laughs> wow, that that is quick. Okay, so <laughs> how do you go about that? So basically, what happens is uh, we start with this mannequin, this wooden mannequin character, mm -hmm. and uh, we have ways of reproportioning it, and we just mold it into something that resembles the character that you want, and then you take sculpture and then you right. kind of go the rest of the way. So this lets us block out characters really quickly, kind of like you know, almost like circle. You know, when you draw, you do that kind of thing. Wow. I can't hear myself. Is that normal? Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So... <laughs> so Nico was just saying that it's really hard to get the proportions of the bots. Yeah. This is going to be the big challenges there. It's been tricky and also the legs are very pointy. So I, I actually, to make a... Um, well, if you were to make it for real... Yeah. It probably has proportions that are actually not really working with real, you know, like physics. Oh yeah, you know, but uh, of course, for this kind of uh, character, we can do yeah, of course, anything, yeah. right? So that's really cool. Yeah, so we <laughs> actually get a, a pretty good amount of variety from stuff, mm -hmm. um, you know, from the character creator, just because we allow it to be very freeform. Mm. You know, we we don't uh, really limit people in how to use it. So unlike uh, more traditional game character stuff, where you kind of tweak the eyeballs or whatever, we just sculpt the whole way or proportion the whole way, and then sculpt all. Uh, the rest of it, so you get characters that are quite unique looking. To me, you know, this is magic because <laughs> uh, you know, like drawing is hard enough, but sculpting—it's something that just if you can't project yourself, you know, into yeah. 3D and you try, it's a very frustrating thing when you don't, when, mm. when you, you know, when. But uh, easier in VR. Exactly, it's easier like in when VR. You put a headset I think on, it's like, oh, trivial. <coughs> after, you know, for having tried a little bit, uh, mm. while you were, you know, you were working on it at the beginning. Yeah. It's kind of surprisingly easy to kind of manipulate compared to you know, the real world. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we, it's like it's a learned skill to be able to do it without VR. Yeah. Interestingly enough, a lot mm -hmm. of people think VR makes things more complicated, mm. but in this case, yeah. it's like no, you just. It's another one of those <laughs> things where you, it's very in, you know, intuitive to move your head around yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You see your hands. Um, I mean, it, it's a similar thing that happens with like 3D tracking. Like people say, oh, you're going to be able to place objects in 3D and it sounds really complicated. And, you know, like Maya and all those tools, you have to move and then mm. rotate and that. Uh, so it sounds hard, but then you get something like the DS4 tracking or the move tracking, and you just like put the objects there. Yeah. And it's so how much correction do you do, or correction? How much do you sort of help the user, you know, like to sort of try to understand what they're trying to make and sort of take them there? Is it all raw? It or we our approach is basically <coughs> start really raw, and then have our artists really figure out what they can do with the tool, and then once we know what are like the kind of the the things that feel good to make and the things that the tool is sort of catered to then we polish those things and then we make those easier in a way right, okay so you know sculpture is I there's different styles right like the style that Maya is doing now is this kind of soft cut style and actually that style is quite accessible even to a beginner and it goes all the way up to the high end like character artists like Maya or Francis or Mike like the people that we have in the studio um, oh. so it's I guess the thing we try to do is we try to make it so that it's it, it's never just a toy. Like, no matter what it is, it has to go from the really simple all the way up to, like, Rodan of course, grade. That's really true. Yeah, yeah. That's just... Um, so we, you know, we don't want to sacrifice um, <coughs> usability for that, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to keep usability without, yeah. you know, keeping spanning those things. But there's also lots of um, simplicity in it because you can just pull other people's assets. So, like... You don't have to sculpt everything. You just search online and you pull pieces mm -hmm, in and mm -hmm. you just drop them in. Yeah. Um, and you can remix other people's work. So you could start with somebody else's character. Uh, so you could take a bot and just change maybe the facial expressions or mm -hmm. the color of the eyes. You could take this yeah, character. Like, like right now, Maya yeah. is just going to like search for some eyeballs. <coughs> um, okay. And Wow. I see. This is the, the crucial moment, Maya. This is the, yeah. this is the one where, you know... 
I'd say 80% of what makes an AR bot is the face. <laughs> so that's where no you pressure. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Excuse me. So I've got a funny story about the AR bots, actually, which is okay. linked to media molecules. So I was keeping that one for later, but yeah. you, know, you know, while we we're looking, yeah, let's do it. So a long time ago, well, a long time ago, when we were making a PS4, yeah, we used to work together. Yeah, yeah, Nico and I used to work towards the tail end to work on the DS4. That's and right, worked yeah. worked really closely on it. And working on the camera and the controller. And we had made loads of uh, demos uh, using the augmented reality. Yeah. And uh, those went polished and it was in the playroom. We weren't even planning to necessarily... Well, we were thinking of grouping them into some sort of package at mm. the time. And uh, we went to see Media Molecule. And we sat down with the whole team in his lovely, um, in a mm. lovely like um, meeting room with like sofas and stuff. And um, and we showed some uh, videos of all the demos. And one of them was the AR bots, but in a very very primitive form, mm. very very simple, cylindrical. And there was a problem: is that that game was played on the floor, and everything else was played in the air. And I turned to the guys and I said, I really like this one, the controller, in the characters inside the controller mm. that you can flick. But perhaps we're not going to be able to keep it because it's played on the floor and we don't want people to have to change the camera position. And Karim just jumped up and he stood up and he went like, no, mate, you've got to keep them. <laughs> Those guys have to stay. <laughs> and so I went back to Japan and then uh, I was thinking, oh, you know, obviously media molecule are <laughs> passionate about it. You know, it means something. Yeah. So yeah. we worked really hard and we managed to actually find a compromise and they stayed in the game and I think... It's partially, you know, it's also it thanks so to those guys. So much charm, you know. Yeah. So today we're here with Media Molecule, yeah, you know, making you an bots, and I think, you know, full cycle. Hey, exactly. that's cool. I didn't know that actually, because yeah. I was, uh, I was working <coughs> with you at that time. I haven't. Yeah, yet yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. right. Uh, yeah, that's when, uh, yeah, we were working on the, the controller and the mm -hmm. nice pants. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the soft blend really makes it quite forgiving. Mm. You don't, uh, you you really don't worry about the joinery too much. You just kind of blend it all together. Yeah. Um, one of the things, unfortunately, is my fault. But we can have metal right now. We can have metal on other objects, but I didn't wire up the UI for doing oh metal. Oh really? So yeah. how are we gonna do? Just gonna have to imagine. Oh really? <laughs> it's gonna be a bit matte. Um, okay. Uh, uh, but yeah, okay. well, we okay. have like metal shaders and stuff that we use uh -huh. for other parts of the game, but we haven't yet worked on it. Um, next time, next time we yeah, sit down, we paint creator. it. Huh? Yeah, yeah, one step at a time, and then we print them out of metal. Mm. Okay. Yep. But yeah, it's cool that they sort of stuck around, and I think they they help in VR a lot too, because again, it's like a mascot. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, those guys have really worked out to be, um, you know, a, a nice mixture between. Uh, Kind of playful and cool. They have yeah. a nice finish that looks like um, you know, like a high quality toy, but also have the playfulness of you know the the, the which is the essence of playroom. We wanted to touch a very yeah. broad audience. So turns out that uh, at, you know gen generally very popular characters. So yeah, because so what's the f <coughs> what's the flying one called? Asobi. Asobi. Yeah. So That's right. Yeah. So Asobi is a bit more of a sort of like single, like a, almost like a host character yeah, for the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the one who teaches you how to play games and things like that. And uh, the robots were one of the activities, but they became so popular that yeah, we started sort of reusing them in every game. Away, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So <laughs> Playroom VR now features the robots in every single uh, yeah, every yeah. single game. Uh, so it's yeah, it's yeah, really it's cool. funny how that works, right? Like you said, you started out with you don't you never host. know where yeah, you take you never know what things. actually yeah. people are gonna latch onto. Yeah, but that's that's the beauty of working on stuff that is innovative. Is that you know you you don't really have a plan, f fully formed in your head at the beginning. Yeah. You sort of know where you where you want to take it, the kind of the emotions you want to get yeah. across. But what the final product will be, I mean, you know, who can tell? The fit, yes. Is it like stubs or is it? <coughs> it's little pointy fits. Um, you can kind of see it? over there yeah, you on can that see flying it. guy. We were doing the character from Journey earlier. Oh yeah. So similar kind of like. Oh yes, that's right. That's it's right. That's interesting. It's a. It seems to be a common aesthetic. Hmm. Choice mm. nowadays. It's yeah. Like a, the pointy toes. So we went through several iterations. At first, it was um, quite a complex look, and actually we re-simplified. So going from these cylindrical characters that were very very primitive, and then went through a loop of fairly complex king characters, mm. but it lacked. It lost some of the. Um, 
mm. essence of the prototype, which was really, yeah, really yeah, pure yeah. and simple. So we went back to something really bare and just really focusing on the eyes as a sort of... The idea was to... You wanted to feel like you had some sort of kids looking up to you because, mm. you know, in VR, they would be on the floor. In AR, they would be on the floor looking up to you. So the way, the way we design them is that when we look from a slightly from above and they look up to you, you really get this kind of endearing kind of feeling. Yeah, you really feel that. That's why the feet were not necessarily kind of important because mm. the camera was always going to be looking down uh, yeah. to the floor. So you'd be seeing the head and the chest and the, the fit were not that important at the time. Mm -hmm. you know. Now it's becoming more important because in VR we're using them and of course you, you yeah. get to see, you get to look at them from all, all, all points of view. So. Yeah, and they have a great head from putting <laughs> a, a headset on. That's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've been actually in a, in, a, in a VR demo, we've got a, a few of them that are actually wearing a PlayStation yeah, VR. Yeah, really you know, good. Yeah. I, I really like that the, the eyes are like a screen as well. Yeah. Like uh -huh. that I think gives you a lot of that's that's flexibility. Right, yeah. And have yeah. you seen the the game Cradle by the way? It's on PC. Cradle. Cradle? No, I haven't. Just check it out. It's got oh. like a, it's got this look screen oh, really? view. And okay. It's got the eyes. Uh, it's Android looking. Game. Yeah, it gives you a license for f to do lots of things. Yeah. Um, you know, you of course, expressions, but also um, you can totally divert. You know, the, the character turn you into you know w whatever display you need just mm -hmm. for the purpose. It's it's. Uh, Actually, going for robots, the reason we went for robots, it was also because the team was really, really small. Yeah. And we wanted to have uh, lots of characters on the floor, but if you start making them uh, other cartoon characters, you know, towards sort of Pixar or human, ca you know, or even yep. more realistic characters, the investment it takes and the sort of, yep. you know, you can you get often the end up with... Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, we thought, no, let's go with something simple that is easy to... Um, we can get to a good level quickly and the robots felt like you know that's the shortest possible mm. route to getting something good but and then like you said the eyes become the key because <coughs> exactly if you're going to take one human element so to speak the yeah. eyes give yeah. you so much yeah that's it so no mouth we've tried actually adding mm. mouth and, and it's just strange a lot Maya of the really good just at doing the cute mouth maybe yeah. we can do a bit of an improvisation is that maya has been doing lots of cute mouths on characters that okay. didn't have mouths like the journey character <laughs> so maybe you'll end up with a mouth even though you didn't want it like <laughs> artistic license Ooh, why is that we're about to go off script <laughs> no <it's laughs> i think the best way for us to do it is actually like the dreams interpretation of it rather Fine. than going for like a, yeah, a realistic a okay full realistic. absolutely i think that should be the way um, yeah. so yeah you know go wild with whatever you were uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're about to go through like six months of iterations that Nico's team went through. <laughs> We're like, oh. no, oh, thank you. So one of the goals of this um, biped <coughs> creator puppet suite mm -hmm. thing is that we want to be able to make characters really quickly mm -hmm. and iterate, kind of mm. like what you're saying. Because when we're doing these sort of creative experiences, we want to just see if it works really quickly. And if it doesn't, either change it or toss it or whatever. Right, right, right. Um, so I think the the main thing we're aiming for on Dreams is like giving people a really excellent prototyping tool. So that we then get, we, we get game developers as a whole to sort of uh, loosen up a little bit and allow more experimentation. And not worry, not be so precious. Like if a character takes you two hours, then rather than a week... You know, it means you can try more <laughs> yeah. um, different things. So there's lots of tools now like Unity and Unreal that, you know, really speed game development up. Um, but uh, they they have a certain aesthetic to them, which is very, you know, programmery and AutoCAD-y. And we're trying to hit this aesthetic of um, just really playful and performance-oriented, as we call it. So the tools, we hope, inspire you mm. to create characters that are a little bit wacky and part of that is just being able to do them quickly so it'd be cool if, uh, to see you know full on game studios as well using this as a concept art tool or you know maybe you guys oh wow well, if you could be I mean that's that's a really good point because very often you know the jobs are separated so that everybody's mm -hmm. got a speciality and it's it's nice as soon as you give as many people as possible the tools to just get started with anything you know like yeah. you were talking about unity and things like that that's really useful because it means that yeah, you don't necessarily need to have a specialist. Yeah, in that's order yeah to get exactly. You got, uh, you got it. <coughs> that's Kareem's biggest point is like he really wants to remove the specialism right. of game development, yeah, which yeah, is yeah, yeah. A, kind of a 
crazy goal in a way because game development is so specialized just by necessity small teams like yours or like media molecule you kind of almost can't have specialists it's exactly too, yeah yeah no. it's yeah, too usually, much of a tax yeah. mm -hmm. so i think it's it's made for that kind of work environment mm. it's like everybody does a bit of everything obviously everyone's going to have their own thing that they're the best at but the cool stuff tends to come out from people that are not quite doing what they were meant to be doing that's right you know well I mean? because they come out of the the, the sort of um the beaten tracks yeah you know <laughs> and um <laughs> so how do you decide for example earlier maya was moving around and uh, the face was kind of following so you have an attribute which is that part i'm making now will be the head yeah and there's a neck joint yeah, yeah. okay so it's basically it has uh, lots of pieces um mm -hmm. and you can when it grays out, it's sort of saying, okay, oh, these of course. are... Yeah, because we started from a, 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 a humanoid. Humanoid, yeah, okay, so that was already preset. Okay, I get it. Okay. So now we'll add a little bit of ground so that uh, the bot has something to stand on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can, you know, we can export um, these dreams as 3D sculpts or as a model. So actually... You can even use it to import into other engines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one of our goals is that concept artists could actually sketch, use this to sketch rather than using something like Photoshop so that their sketches are much closer to the final. Mm. Um, and that way they can, you know, because concept artists simply start early in the process. And then by the end, it's kind of like they're just sitting because everyone's yeah. just building out what they've done. And we were, you know, going back to that point of less um, specialization, it's like, well, if they could go all the way and the tools, because concept artists are very loose and they, they don't like the, the rigidity of, you know, um, the, the more traditional game tools, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so how do we kind of get them into the mix without... <laughs> Just captivated by this. Uh, yeah, this I'm just looking at the uh, coming to life. <laughs> yeah, so when you're not working on um, on the character, it sort of looks at you cutely. Hmm, <laughs> that's really great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really lovely. And uh, yeah, when you're done, you just <coughs> grab it and puppeteer it around. Is there a way like can you deform? Like uh, can you squ squ squish an entire character? You like can squ squish pieces. Uh huh. Um, but you can't you oh, can kind of okay. scale the character itself okay. yeah. and squish them a little bit. Wow. <laughs> and the feet are, you know, obviously done by the computer because yeah. we uh, we, got <laughs> <laughs> we could just clone them out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we forgot the antenna. Oh, where's the antenna? No, no, you can keep them cloned. This is cool. Make a bunch of them. Yeah. Because actually, when you add antenna to one of them, it's going to pop oh up really? on all of them. Oh, really? How many bots are in the. 40. 40. Yeah. <laughs> that was the playroom. <laughs> that could be tricky. So when you start editing one of them, I think they might all... Uh, if you... Can you add an antenna to the top <coughs> of one of them? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you can kind of see it on one of them. But yeah. it's just on the top. It's like a little black one. Yeah, so we, we do the, the feet and the walking procedurally just because we don't want people to have to worry about it. Mm. You know, we, we want yeah, yeah, people yeah, to be course. worrying about the... Yeah, a little bit, a little bit shorter than that. Um, <coughs> we want people to focus on the story and the gameplay, not so much on the, you know, having to work about walk cycles or character, kind of rigging the character or any of that. Um, and we found that uh, it really, when people get freed up, their mind sort of starts focusing on the bigger picture. Mm. So it's not just a matter of, oh, we can now do this really quickly and isn't that great? We can do games twice as fast. But also, like, when your brain is not thinking about, oh, how am I going to operate the tool when it's a bit more natural? Um, the brain has ideas that it wouldn't normally have. 
if that makes any sense. It's a bit yeah, of a vague yeah, yeah. statement, but you know, when you're playing guitar, you're not thinking about the strings after you've learned it, obviously. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. Can I'll you move around with it. Yeah. Can you squish them a, a bit, like a bit more, like round, round, and in sort of a little bit more compact? You know, deformed, like you know. The we d we don't we don't actually have a deformed tool. We can okay. only make them smaller uniformly. All right. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's the dreams version. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> see, see, I'm used to going to the artist and go. Can you make it yeah, more like that? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. No problem. <laughs> So what happens then? Uh, all these characters can have their own AI. Yeah. So you can tune their walk cycles and stuff. Actually, maybe we should do that. We should tune, tune them, and then we can puppeteer them. So um, we we actually aren't showing AI at the oh moment. Well. We can, but you can tune all of the different uh, walking parameters of the procedural walk. Oh, okay. Okay. That's cool. Wobbliness. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that's very nice. It's very silly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> How much sass? <laughs> no sass. It's a robot, after all. What's sass? You know, like. Okay. Like, like what's like the French word for that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we don't do any of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Too cool. <laughs> Oh, this is funny. This is really funny because all of these features, I mean, you know, uh, well, apart from the speed, I suppose, uh, I've got something uh, really humorous. Yeah. About, or even the speed. So it's like, uh, like, yeah, you, you, you're very likely to end up with something looking funny. Mm. It's not just, uh, yeah. So, uh, okay. show you a bit of the, the DualShock controls as well. So, uh, <coughs> once we, we've got these characters, we can actually go into you know, the live mode, as we might call it. And you can possess one of these. And oh, then you can wow, just okay. run around with the nice, analog sticks. Nice, 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 And you can... <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. So L1 and R2 is like... Uh. <laughs> and, of course, because it's a... Uh, you know, we still do motion tracking. We can... We have a lot of expressivity when, oh, we, yeah, yeah, when yeah. we sort of talk to characters. Um. Oh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so X is to jump. X is to jump. So a any character you make can jump. Uh, so it's gonna be turn off and onable kind okay. of thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> just by default, we figure like we give people the tools to make a game where they can navigate, you know, mm. terrain and <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool. That kind of thing. Um, and then if they don't want the character to jump, um, we can kind of turn it off. Can so can you map functions to buttons? Could you say that instead of jump, I want to put something else? Yeah, that's yeah. not in the right now. Basically, our plan is that one of the reasons that DualShock is really good for puppeteering is because you have a lot of buttons. And if you think of like something like a marionette, um, there's lots of dexterity in your hands that you mm. use to control things. So you know, you can imagine facial expressions. You know, the basic thing we did is you know the arms are on these. Uh, um, yeah. But yeah, like you, you know, when we do the, the imp, for example, right? Um, the mouth uh, on the imp, which we you, we use the imps for communication with people, right? So you can see other people's imps, but we, we on the touchpad you can draw mouth shape. Oh, so it's really good when you see other <coughs> imps in the level, you could just yep. say, you know, mm. yeah. and on the two hands you can control the eyebrows, so you can go. Uh, okay. So all of this sort of stuff where it's quite, you know, puppeteery. That's really cool. That is so media molecule. Love it. So yeah, Paulo's uh, has worked on this quite extensively uh, over the past. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know even how long. So Francis sort of designed the character, and Paolo's been coding this beast up. And then you set it in that position, and then it stays. And it stays. All oh, right. Uh, and the mouth is automatically, you know, sort of yeah. animated, yeah, animated by the camera input. That. Yeah, yeah. So it's so, so kind of plan is that what you see other imps go into your levels because you can have multiple people in one dream kind of working together. Hmm. Um, and the kind of main modes of communication you have is you know the imp, um, and you also in your tools, you have another tool which is like a light painting tool. So you can imagine saying, oh, this bot, I like this one, or, you know, this one, don't need it, or whatever. So it's almost like, you know, Demon Souls, Dark Souls message leaving, but you uh. can draw. Um, so you can record your imp kind of saying, you know, uh uh uh, I don't like this, or whatever. Because if you're collaborating, you're so, you can 
kind of communicate and say, no, actually, I want, you know, I want a tree over here. And I could just kind of sketch a tree and then Kareem says, oh, yeah, cool, I can do a tree and he'll do like... So these tools for communication are, are really important. Mm. Um, but these same tools can be then, you know, applied to puppeteering the characters, right? Because it's puppeteering the imp is just sort of... Uh, a condensed version of puppeteering characters because mm -hmm. characters mm -hmm. can have, you know, right now we don't have any mouths, but they'll have mouths and eyes and stuff, and you can use these same kinds of controls. Okay, to controls too. And everything that you do is potentially recorded, so instead of having to go in and say, okay, now I'm doing animation, you just hit record and then you move the character and that's it. Like, so by playing the game, you can make a little video of, you know, oh, I'm walking around looking, what's that? What's over there? And all I do is just hit record, and then that's... You can make little movies this way, and it's a really good intro. Mm. So, mm. you know, making games obviously requires logic and characters and scene assembly and all of that. But just a movie is really quite simple. This is great. <laughs> this is so fun. I like the heart. You guys yeah, should consider little it. heart. That's it. <laughs> hmm. So what are you guys showing um, in VR today? So we're showing a new playroom mm. uh, that's got um, some uh, some you know family family games. So you know VR is usually uh, quite intense. You know the first thing we think about VR is like immersive and intense. So we we're approaching it with an angle of like accessibility and just things you can easily share. And one thing we're doing is using the two screen as a completely different screen. Yeah. So you can have one person in VR and then you know five yeah, people you guys are on the, the biggest TV. like drivers of that when we were developing the we VR We were trying to find ways to just, uh, you know, there's always going to be like a lot of game, gamers content, you know, because mm. that's yeah, what of uh, course. We, we're very good at. So we're always trying to also complement that with some, um, you know, some yeah, content that's, that Yeah, you know, we were talking in the VR panel about how is VR <coughs> going to spread. Mm. And one of the big things that came up is like when people come out and try VR, mm. they want to feel included. So if you just put on a headset and your friends are just sitting on the couch and they're like, uh, what do I do? Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. Having them kind of participate in the game exactly, and be able to yeah. trade the headset. Yeah. That's going to be super important for, yeah. you know, introducing VR to people that aren't, you yeah, know. Yeah, to mainstream, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's really important. So, yeah, so we've been doing that with lots of uh, mini games, you know, that have like different themes that, you know, people can relate to. There's something be like Godzilla, another one be like, like Tom and Jerry mm -hmm. and something like a Ghost House. And um, you always play together. So it's always at least five players, you know, up to. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's not something you hear every day. No, it's no, at no. Least multiplayer five players, VR, yeah, yeah. Five, pl five plus. <laughs> <laughs> multiplayer is fun, you know. Like I know that yeah. you're a big fan also of like sofa multiplayer. I mean, yeah. online is also really cool for certain games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but there, there is vibe. something about just being like this and just like passing the controller, you know, like yeah. you know, having a drink, and just just chilling out, you know. Yeah, I mean, we have like a long rivalry with Nick and I on Street Fighter, and by oh, rivalry, yeah. <laughs> history of him kicking my too, ass yeah. and me attempting. <laughs> That's why <laughs> right. I get somebody else controllers and uh, all the controls are mapped wrong and yeah, yeah, yeah. that's your excuse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but basically like that feeling is like you can't replicate that. Like online it's it's got its own vibe and mm. it's it lets you have a lot more people mm. in the same space. Mm. But there's something quite special about local yeah. local co op. But that's one thing VR is actually uh getting you know good good for is that when you're in a VR space and you can see other people and you can see their heads moving and they can talk yeah. and you can see their hands actually you get a feeling of being together and that's mm. uh that might be like the, the sort of the bridge it's between, an interesting you know. bridge yeah yeah cool mm. this is really great guys thank you cool man well mm. thanks so much for stopping by maya well done <laughs> it's lovely meeting you <laughs> we'll work on squishing that's all right <laughs> no, this is fine next time all we right. paint them i want to paint them <laughs>